Hi everyone, Kim Schofield here, back with another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm creating a project for the Crafters Workshop and I am going to be working on showing you how to reuse some uh, scraps of paper that you have and then how to use a mask. So you see that art journal that's down there. That was what I created um, in the last one of my last videos. And during that video, which I'll include a link to in the description below, I showed you how to take all the leftover deli paper scraps and glue everything down to a piece of cardstock. So now I am trying to figure out what to do with that piece of beautiful paper. Well, I found this stencil. Um, this is a design from Dina Wakely. And I love this design. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to do a Dina Wakely inspired art journal page using this mask. So because I can kind of see through it, I'm, I'm figuring out where I want that to go. And I'm using a piece of painter's tape to hold that in place because I'm going to be going over the mask with paint. So I will be blocking out a little bit of that background using some paint. So I had two colors here that I liked, uh, both from Dina Wakely, a blackberry and then night and some baby wipes. And I'm also using a completely dry brush. This is the most important thing. You need to have a dry brush to do this um, or else the paint just gets too watery and it goes all over and you want something that's really kind of sketchy looking. Um, not very opaque. I mean, I want it very opaque where it's going around the stencil, but not as I'm starting to feather it out uh, towards the rest of the background because I don't want to lose all of that beautiful designed paper in the background. So you can see I'm kind of stippling the paint on. I'm not going, I'm not doing broad strokes back and forth uh, over the stencil. And mostly because I kind of want that paint to you know, be more like subtly joined in the background there, um, not have these very broad strokes of color. Um, and so, and I also don't want that stencil to pick up if I was to go back and forth over the stencil with broad strokes. So I just decided that that blackberry color was not quite dark enough right around the edge of the stencil. So I'm going back in with that night color. And the night is actually, it's not a black, it kind of looks black, but it's actually a very, very deep navy color. And so I just really wanted a little bit darker. And so I'm going around, um, just going around that whole space again, making that a little bit darker. So you'll see a little bit of that blackberry come through and then um, some of that night. So now I'm working with my baby wipe and the chevron stencil to remove some of the paint while it is uh, still wet. And you can see that just comes off and that just adds a little bit more design and helps to blend it, it in with the background so you don't just have kind of this blob of color. And then I can use my stencil, my uh, I'm sorry, my baby wipe here to kind of soften up the edges as well. You could even come back in with a little bit of water. Um, I pulled a little bit more paint and then I thought, well, let's pull a little bit more of that purple color in so it looks like it's been all part of the piece to begin with. And then I'll go back in with my stencil and remove uh, some of that paint as well. So this makes it look like one cohesive uh, art journal page instead of something, you know, two different things that I'm trying to blend together. So creating that color over the whole background and that stencil design helps to do that. So here is my finished mask piece and I'm going to dry that uh, paint. So this is just a little tip for the extra paint that's left on your stencil. After you finish, so you saw that wet paint, you can go back on to, uh, this is just the back of the paper, but you could go on to another art journal page. And you can see I'm using a clean baby wipe. I'm cleaning my stencil, uh, but I'm also creating another masked area. Um, this is a great way, not only to keep your stencils, to clean them off if you want to. Um, and I've kind of messed that up there, but I can just realign that. So it's a great way to clean your stencils and it's also to create extra artwork, especially if you're working in a journal. You can mop up extra paint on other pages or you can clean your stencils like this. And sometimes you have something created and it didn't uh, require much work. It was just your cleanup stuff. So I die cut a few circles of uh, text paper. This come from some vintage books I have and I am just gluing that down with some matte medium. 
Um, I tend to just use my finger when I have little pieces like this to attach. It's easier than a brush. And the, um, the paper is so delicate because it's vintage that you got to be kind of careful with that anyway. And then I am going to hit that with the heat gun just a little bit to try and glue and dry up some of that glue. So now I'm going to go in with a food ball marker and kind of do some scribbly outlining here on the figure. Um, I've taken a few Dina Wakely classes, and this is something that she does um, just to add, make it stand out just a little bit more. You could even draw more details onto the dress. You could create a neckline if you wanted to or um, the, a bottom part of the dress. And now I'm using a Stabilo pencil. If you don't have a Stabilo pencil, buy, I don't know, 100 of them because they're fantastic. Uh, this is black and it is going on top of a darker surface. So it's not hugely noticeable. Uh, it's a little bit more noticeable probably in person. But this, again, is just defining those circles a little bit. And then I decided I liked that Stabilo pencil so much that I was going to go back in and trace around uh, my little uh, woman figure here. So Stabilo reacts with water um, and it creates kind of like a watercolor. It's got a real heavy line. I love it. Love this pencil. It's fantastic. Um, and so I'm just going to go around and you can see that darkens up that line a little bit better than the uh, food ball marker did. And again, drying that because it is going on top of acrylic paint. So I want to make sure that's dry. So this is a pack of Wendy Becky uh, matte minis. I love these little hearts. I put them on everything. And I'm just coloring this with a Copic marker. I'm going to go around the sides as well so the whole thing is colored. Um, I feel like I put these hearts on everything I make. They're just so cute. And then I'll just use, again, some matte medium to attach that onto my little female figure there, my mask, mask area. So I had these little sparkly stars that I die cut for another project, and I never used them. And they were sitting on my desk, and I thought, hey, these look cute on top of the circles. So I am attaching those uh, with some more matte medium. And strangely enough, I had four stars left and I have four circles. So I think it was meant to be. And I kind of mushed my paper down there on that bottom circle. So having a star kind of covered up the little tear that I had in my paper. So that just worked out perfectly. And I love the silver, a little bit of silver sparkly pop uh, on top of the purple background. So now I have my sentiment. Uh, it's a Dina Wakely. It is from another one of her sets. Um, I will include the link to the name of the set. But um, I just stamped it on a manila tag, which is, I really, the manila tags hold up so well. And I'm going to uh, cut off the top part of that sentiment. I just want those two bottom lines. And I tend to cut my sentiments apart. Um, it's rare that I use them all as one piece. It kind of depends on how it fits onto the page. But I, sometimes I kind of like my words spread out instead of just two straight lines or one little block. So I am cutting apart. First, I'm getting irritated with my <laughs> pages curling. So I put down some heavy bottles there to hold everything still. Um, and then I'm cutting all the words apart from the sentiment and I will actually glue each of them down individually. And I'm not too worried about how straight they are or how straight my edges are. I really just uh, cut them all apart. And this allows you to take a sentiment and stretch it out. And so now I can better fill uh, this page because this is an eight and a half by 11 page. And so, you know, if you have this smaller sentiment, to me, it just looks kind of lost on the page. So I really like the ability to uh, stretch it out and put the words in different areas and kind of fill that space that I had there on the left-hand side of the page, which helps to balance out with the figure on the right-hand side of the page. And so I'm just using matte medium to glue all of those down. And I'm just taking a little baby wipe and cleaning up any of that stuff that oozes out underneath. So I did add some journaling I'm using a, a Signo white gel pen and really just wrote down some of my thoughts, things that had gone on this week. I write pretty sloppy intentionally, so um, you'd, you'd have to really look pretty hard to figure out what I'm saying, but I really like the look of that white on there, and I remember what I was talking about. Um, I'm finishing up by adding some Wink of Stella glitter pen, and that is just about it for me this week in this video. Thank you so much for joining me. 
If you enjoyed the video, please uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can see the description below for where to buy these products, or you can visit the Crafters Workshop blog. Happy crafting!